we share these streets. True tales of everyday folk in bygone Nottingham. Oh my god. Episode 17, Harwood. There's a black and white heritage plaque on the hotel on the corner of George Street and Carlton Street in Nottingham. It reads... Notts County Football Club, the world's oldest professional league club. Founded 1862. Officers and committee elected at a meeting in this hotel Wednesday the 7th of December 1864. It's slightly confusingly worded and it'd be easy to think this is where Notts County had been formed in 1862. That honour though falls to the Lion Hotel on Clumber Street where seven individuals met and formed the football club. The seven were Major Hack, W.A. Hodges, Richard Daft, Bernard Bradley, F.S. Smith, Mr. A. Blake Ballion and Mr. J.C. Hodges. Sadly, the documentation outlining that initial meeting has been lost over time and newspaper reports provide little information. The American Civil War was being fought then and the press were understandably focused on that. County had been formed before what would become the sports governing body, the Football Association. There was no consensus on the rules at that time, and the game tended to be closer in spirit to rugby than modern football. The goalkeeper, for example, could be charged out of the way by an opposing player, leaving the goal exposed. It was also considered an acceptable part of the game to intentionally hack at the opponent's shins and trip and elbow them. In football at the time of recording it's typical to have three to five defenders, three to five midfielders and one to three forwards. In football's infancy it was almost the exact opposite, two defenders and nine forwards. The defenders were known as behinds which conjures the peculiar idea that rival fans may have spent time in pubs and on touchline discussing the pros and cons of each other's behinds. The rule that teams had to consist of 11 players wasn't compulsory until 1870, and up until then numbers fluctuated. Around the time of Notts County's formation though, it was typical to have 11 or 12. The year after Notts began, the Football Association came to be. Founded at the Freemasons Tavern in London, the FA drew up their official rules and County quickly applied for a copy. Notts County played at several different locations before finding a home at Meadow Lane. The first was a place called The Hollows, which is described as being in the park area. There's some ambiguity about where exactly this was located, with some suggesting it may even be within the castle grounds. Some of the confusion stems from hollow being used quite commonly around the area, to denote somewhere built over the old castle's ditch. More confusion stems from the fact that Notts later played at a place called the Castle Cricket Ground, which was actually in the Meadows area. There was some great information and theories going back and forth about this on Twitter, so many thanks to Scott Lomax, David Wilson, Railway Maniac, Lindsay Clark, Ian Marsden and Nigel King, among others, for chipping in with information and old maps. In volume 11 of their Victorian Nottingham series, the authors Illif and Bagley state, the earliest games were played on a ground called the Hollows in the park. It was just a piece of ordinary pasture land. Cows would be grazing on it for most of the week. There were no stands. The spectators stood around the touchline and the players changed in a nearby hut. The club played at numerous grounds in their early years, including that old Castle Cricket Ground in the Meadows, cohabiting with Nottingham Forest at the Town Ground and later the City Ground, and then the legendary Trent Bridge Cricket Ground. Shortly after they left Park Hollow, a player joined Notts County who would have a big impact on the club and sporting life in Notts in general. Ernest Harwood Greenhalgh, who went by Harwood, was born on the 6th of March 1849. 
He was baptised on the 28th of March at St Peter and Paul in Mansfield. He was one of four brothers, along with Richard, John and Harold. The Greenhalgh family had moved to Mansfield in North Knotts in the early 1830s. They originally lived on Windmill Lane and leased nearby Stanton Mill on Bath Lane. Business success soon followed and other homes and mills were purchased. The mills were originally water powered from the River Morn, with Field Mill reputed to have had the largest water wheel in the country. It was 40 feet in diameter, 10 feet wide and boasted 124 buckets. The mills were either cotton doubling or thread manufacturing. The majority of the finished product was used locally in lace manufacture. On the 1861 census, Herbert, the head of the family, is listed as employing 382 people, 59 men, 221 women, 82 girls and 20 boys. It's likely that many people living in Mansfield now had relatives from those days who worked for the Greenhalgs. The business formed Field Mill Football Club and employees were encouraged to join. Harwood, Richard, John and Harold were all keen sportsmen. The club went by different names at different times, including Greenhalgh FC and Mansfield Greenhalgh. Harwood Greenhalgh signed for Notts County in 1869. He was a defender and made over 147 appearances for the club. His brothers signed up too. County had something of a tradition of playing brothers in the early days, and as well as the Greenhalghs, there was Arthur and Harry Kersham, two Morse brothers, two Ashwells, two Sheltons, two Jessop brothers, two Oswalds and two Walker Deans. In 1872 Harwood was made captain and is said to have been hugely influential and adaptable as a player. He was the ideal role model for his teammates. On the 30th of November 1872 he was picked for England as a fullback against Scotland in the first ever international football match. He wasn't just the first Notts County player to play at international level, but part of England's first ever starting eleven. Football at the time was largely played by the well-to-do of the upper classes. Harwood was one of only two players not from a London-based or university team to be chosen by the England selectors for the match against Scotland. He played as the only fullback in a 1-1-8 or a 1-2-7 formation. The idea of one English defender against seven or eight Scottish attackers seems absurd in modern football terms and Harwood must have been made of stern stuff. There was a return match several months later on the 8th of March 1873 and only Harwood and one other teammate, Charles Chenery, impressed the selectors enough to be recalled. Harwood's adaptability was such that he played forward in the second match. In 1872 Harwood had a daughter, Edith, with Annie Wilson. Annie and Harwood married on the 12th of June 1874. In 1881, the census lists Harwood as living at Carr Bank, Nursery Street, Mansfield, with his brother Harold. Harwood's marital status at this time was listed as single, so potentially he and Annie had separated. His employment was listed as a cotton doubler, employing 320 female workers. In the 1882-83 season he led County to the FA Cup semi-finals. Sadly though they lost 2-1 to Old Etonians at the Kennington Oval. 1883 saw the birth of Winifred Emma Greenhalgh, Annie and Harwood's second daughter. Sadly Harwood's mother Emma passed away on November 23rd of the same year. In 1888 a third daughter, Ethel Sarah Greenhalgh was born. The following year saw the death of her older sister Winifred. 1888 was a historic year for football. On the 8th of September the first organised league in the world was formed with 12 member clubs from the Midlands and north of England. Accrington, Aston Villa, Blackburn Rovers, Bolton Wanderers, Burnley, Derby County, Everton, Knox County, Preston North End, Stoke, West Bromwich Albion and Wolverhampton Wanderers. Prior to the formation of the league, fixtures were somewhat chaotic, with clubs organising individual matches themselves on an ad hoc basis. On the 1891 census, Harwood was listed as still living at Carr Banks, Nursery Street, but now with his father, Herbert. Harwood was described as single with an occupation of cotton doubler. It seems certain now that the marriage had ended, 
as Annie was listed as living at Nottingham Road, Mansfield, with their daughters Edith and Ethel. The same year saw County reach their first FA Cup final, but they lost out to Blackburn Rovers that time. Harwood no longer played professionally. Three years later, in 1894, County were back and romped a victory in the FA Cup with a 4-1 thrashing of the Bolton Wanderers at Goodison Park. As the end of the century approached, Harwood was on his heels. In 1897, both Annie and Herbert, Harwood's dad, passed away. In football, the same year saw the formation of football amateurs Mansfield Wesleyans, who are still going today, as we'll see. They went on to have a rivalry with the Mansfield Mechanics, who played home matches on the Greenhalgh's Field Mill site. Things were looking brighter by 1898, when Harwood married Kate Goddard. On the 1901 census they were listed as living together at 7 West Hill Drive, Mansfield. Harwood's occupation at the time was listed as a cotton doubler, dryer and bleacher. In 1906 Mansfield Wesleyans became professional and the church is reported as distancing itself somewhat with that change. Perhaps to reflect the change but not lose touch with its roots, the club changed its name slightly too to Mansfield Wesleys. By 1911, Harwood was listed as living at 48 Belvedere Street, Mansfield with Kate. His occupation was now yarn agent and salesman. In March 1918, Catherine passed away. World War I, the Mansfield Mechanics defaulted on rent at their field mill site, and their local rivals capitalised on this and moved in. Their rivals had been known as Mansfield Wesleys, but by this time held the name they hold now, Mansfield Town. Harwood Greenhalg died on the 14th of July 1922 at 32 Thornywood Rise in Carlton. He's buried at Carlton Cemetery, Nottingham. The official records don't tell us why he ended up so far from Mansfield in his final days. The census records may sometimes list him as a yarn agent or cotton doubler, but his place in football legend is beyond doubt. Field Mill is still Mansfield Town FC's home and is regarded as the oldest ground in the league since it's hosted football matches since 1861. Harwood played football before the rules were standardised and even before the league was founded. At the time of recording, both the European Championship and the Copa America are underway, with international sides competing for silverware. Harwood was there at the very birth of international football too, representing England against Scotland. Outside of football, he was working in knots as the textile industry here boomed. All of us could be said to live in interesting times of significant change, but for most of us the change is going on around us, and we're largely just witnessing what will later be read in history books. Harwood, though, was actively involved in some of the big changes of his lifetime. We don't know if he kept a journal, but I wonder if, in the corner of an attic or a cellar somewhere in Mansfield or Carlton, there are notebooks recording the thoughts of this extraordinary man living in extraordinary times. <laughs>